Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Sci-Fi Paul Sci. So today we're going to be talking about the Brotherhood of Darkness. And why not? Because are we not all equal in the Brotherhood of Darkness? Now I know the lame, the name is, uh, <laughs> Freudian slip there. I know the name is really lame, but it was, it was kind of an interesting experiment in Sith philosophy. So before we get into the Brotherhood of Darkness, let's do the setting a bit. So the new Sith Wars took place approximately from 2000 before the Battle of Yavin to 1000 before the Battle of Yavin. While the old Sith Empire, the one that Vitiate had ruled, had long since collapsed, uh, the Fourth Jedi Schism happened, if I recall, and the leader of the Schism took the name Darth Ruin and built their own Sith Empire. The new Sith Empire was able to, through a series of battles, basically destroy the Republic's entire fleet and field armies. However, Darth Ruin, as is the case with all Darth Lo Dark Lords, was overthrown, and the Sith were unable to finish off the Republic because they immediately fell into infighting and warlordism. So you had a thousand years of on and off fighting in which the Republic made no real efforts to regain the systems that had lost, and the individual warlords periodically made raids into Republic space, but by and large the situation was just constant warfare to no real end. This uh, eventually became known as the Republic Dark Age, when stellar civilization more or less collapsed, and technology had been set back, I believe, like thousands or uh, thousands of years is how it was often referred to. They, during this time period, they started using very old technology because there was a breakdown of um, the hollow net or whatever the system is that connects the various planets together. So a lot of the major commerce and support systems that kind of worked had fallen apart but anyways it was really bad this is the period where we get jedi lords which is the most base form of government possible basically um a bunch of the jedi would go and clear the sith out of a system and the people of the system would beg the jedi to become their lord so you had jedi counts jedi dukes jedi kings and they would rule systems as hereditary monarchs. And they were overwhelmingly beloved by the people. But that, but I digress. Just a cool fact. So anyway, so the new Sith Wars basically just kept going on and on. And it seemed like the gal galactic civilization was going to eventually end. Just because all of the galaxy's resources were being taken up. And there was no breather for any rebuilding. So the Jedi, in their desperation, promoted an ex a young um, extremist in their midst, Skier Khan, to the rank of Jedi Master, and more or less put him in charge of ending the Sith threat once and for all. Skier Khan was chosen because he was an incredibly charismatic figure, a skilled military tactician, and one of the most gifted users of battle meditation and the Jedi mind trick in history. He could, through a combination of his natural charisma and force gifts, hypnotize entire crowds and could turn the tide of entire battles with his, medita with his um, battle meditation. For those of you who don't know, battle meditation is basically the Jedi or Sith reaches out with their minds and moralizes their troops and kind of provides limited telepathy between them so they can coordinate their actions better while also demoralizing the opposing side and making it them more difficult, making it like confusing them and making it harder for them to um, perform actions. It's not very useful at an individual level, but it's extremely useful for fleets. But anyway, so Khan was an extremist and he essentially believed that the failure of the Jedi and the Republic to defeat the Sith was the reason why the galaxy was in such a bad state. Uh, state. So he took um, a large portion of the Jedi Order and launched a crusade into Sith space, immediately defeating a number of Sith Lords. However, during this time period, he came to the conclusion that the, the galaxy would be better off under his rule, and he could defeat, he could end the Republic Dark Age 
and the fragmentation of the, the new Sith Empire and bring the galaxy once again under one ruler. So Khan left the Jedi Order and founded the Brotherhood of Darkness. Now how it was founded was after he'd kind of been the first couple warlords and had kind of established himself as being the preeminent power in Sith space, he offered amnesty, um, a confirmation of their territories, and the and um, a place at the Dark Council for any remaining warlord who would join. So most of the remaining Sith warlords thought this was a pretty good deal, so they joined Khan. So more or less overnight, all of the Sith territories joined with him in what became known as the Brother of da Brotherhood of Darkness, which was an attempt to combine Jedi organization with Sith philosophy in kind of this strange hybrid of the two. So the Brotherhood of Darkness... One of the first things they did was they banned the title Darth. During this time period, no one held the title Darth. It was viewed as too divisive. Um, one of the reasons people take the title Darth is not only to signify their power, but to serve as a challenge. Taking the title Darth makes you a target for all the other Sith. Um, any Sith who wants to make a name for themselves, any Sith who wants to climb to the top, can do that by killing a Darth. It's basically um, the, the Sith version of come and get me, I can take on all challengers. So the title Sith was banned. Now traditionally there's only one Dark Lord of the Sith who's the head of the Sith Order. An exception to this was Vitiate's Empire in which all members of the Dark Council were one because there was an Emperor. So what, what Khan did is he gave the title Dark Lord of the Sith to every member of the Council. So theoretically, all the Sith Lords were equal, and the motto was all are equal in the Brotherhood of Darkness. So you had most of the former Warlords and a number of exceedingly powerful Sith Lords, all of whom were members of the Brotherhood of Darkness, and all of whom were theoretically equal. The Brotherhood also carried out a number of other reforms. Most notably, they ended the practice of apprentices killing each other and killing their masters. Instead, what happened was they would take in pretty much anyone who had force abilities, much like the Jedi would. Those who were weak in force abilities but still had them were sent to be trained as Sith Marauders or Sith Warriors and become lightsaber combatants. They were used as kind of uh, shock troopers or elite soldiers to go along with the main Sith armies. The, those with moderate amounts of force ability went to become Sith Inquisitors or Sith Assassins and that's pretty obvious what they're for. The strongest, though, were sent to Korriban, where they were trained to become Sith Lords and eventually joined the Brotherhood of Darkness. And it was strongly discouraged to the point of being against the rules for apprentices to kill one another. Even unofficially, I mean, periodically they had theoretically had rules against apprentices killing one another, but now they were actually enforcing them. Because the idea was they were trying to end the, the Sith killing Sith. No longer would it be every Sith for themselves. They would be united in the vision. Um, all would be equal in the Brotherhood of Darkness and all would be part of it. If the Brotherhood of Darkness succeeded, then all Sith would reap the benefits of it. If the Brotherhood of Darkness failed, then all Sith would fail. And for the most part, people were fairly happy with this. Some of the older Sith were a bit upset because this was entirely abandoning tradition. It was abandoning uh, the chaos, the rule of the strong over the weak, natural selection. It was abandoning a lot of the things that the Sith Order had traditionally stood for, but it, it gave them for the first time a relatively united government. So the Brotherhood of Darkness, since it, they were not... <sighs> The fact that they were more collectivist and less, not less evil, but more pragmatic than previous Sith incarnations meant that the Brotherhood could, well, act sanely. And what they wound up doing was they went throughout the Outer Rim, wild space, and just kind of the, the, uh, the periphery of the Republic and recruited masses of people who were just fed up with Republic government. During this time period, the, the Republic in its desperation was granting outrageous charters to various companies to basically rape the Outer and Mid-Rim 
it, so that they could get some enough resources to try to rebuild some of their fleets. Uh, the Republic was basically desperate, understandably so. And, it, and because of that, and because of the loss of really their ability to exert any control over its territory, the people in the outer and mid-room were really pissed off, and billions of them joined the Brotherhood of Darkness. The Brotherhood of Darkness would go on to build a massive war machine and launch an assault against the Republic. The Brotherhood more or less won the war, defeating Republic fleet after Republic fleet. However, what wound up happening was the Jedi Army of Light, under the leadership of Lord Hoth, withdrew most of the Jedi from the Republic Army and went to the planet of Rusan. <clears throat> On Rusan, the Jedi dug in, built ambushes, learned the lay of the land. And ultimately, this was the downfall of the Brotherhood, as Khan believed that it was more important to destroy the Jedi Order once and for all than to achieve total military victory. So he stopped the Sith fleet right before they were going to invade the Core Worlds in Coruscant, and continued to feed Sith into the meat grinder that Rusan became. Well, the Sith had much larger numbers. In fact, during this time period, they had larger numbers than the Jedi because they had been taking in everybody that they could find, and they were unable to, uh, and they weren't killing off their apprentices anymore. The Jedi were dug in and had ambushes prepared, and the whole thing was a multi-year-long meat grinder that saw the destruction of most of both orders. Ultimately, ironically enough, the reason the Dark Brotherhood would the Brotherhood of Darkness would collapse and cease to exist was despite its claim that everyone was equal within it. In truth, it was only held together by Khan's will. Khan was able to basically mind control and influence the other Sith Lords and bolster the spirit of the army. His unique charisma and force abilities were the only thing that more or less held the improbable coalition together, and it's unlikely that it would have survived his death. To make matters worse, though, not only was it not what it promised to be, which was a kind of a Sith oligarchy, but the the advantages of having a, a multi-person executive were lost because it was Khan's show. And his refusal to finish the military campaign and invade the Core Worlds led more and more Sith resources to be diverted to the hopeless battle on Rusen, which allowed the Republic to more or less retake all the territory they had lost, and even begin to take some of the Sith's original land. While the Brotherhood of Darkness was eventually defeated by a disgusted Bane who viewed them as traitors to the the um the Sith of old, it remains one of the few times in history where the Sith Order more or less actually functioned. The only times, in my view, that the Sith really functioned were probably the Rule of Two, um, the Brotherhood of Darkness, and the One Sith, although the One Sith I, I need to learn a bit more about. But, yeah, the Brotherhood of Darkness, I think part of the reason why it, it was just kind of, it was during the, the, the Republic Dark Age, there was not a lot of technology, there's not a ton of lore about them. And we don't really know how well the concept would have actually worked in the long term. The actual Brotherhood lasted less than 10 years. In all of that time, it was under basically the control of Khan. It, it's kind of funny because throughout the book, Darth Bane, uh, Path of Destruction, people frequently criticize, like, um, whenever, when Khan enters, everyone rises to their feet except for one person. They're like, show respect to Khan. And then he's like, are we not all equal in the Brotherhood of Darkness? So, un unfortunately, when Khan started to make bad strategic decisions, the all are equal thing went out the window, and they just kind of stupidly followed him to all of their doom. It would be interesting if they had have tried this experiment again over a longer period of time without the entire project being dependent upon a single charismatic leader. But I suppose we'll never know. It's kind of hard for me to compare this to any real-world examples because while we can talk about the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and was it Libentem Vito or Libatum Vito or whatever it is where any member of the assembly could veto any piece of legislation, which is theoretically kind of what the Dark Brotherhood was. As much like that, they were all theoretically equals. And truth, the Brotherhood of Darkness was just a... 
a um, an enamel put over Lord Khan's absolute control. So now there we go. I hope that was interesting. Sorry, there's not enough material to kind of go into as much detail on some of these as others. For this one, I'm restricted to just the novel Darth Bane Path of Destruction. Whereas like with the New Order, there's all kinds of stuff to talk about, as are the Dune books. Anyways, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later.